Hey there, Lickin' Riffers. Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, in which you're gonna learn the most powerful and most effective chord you probably never heard of. And I know it sounds like clickbait, but just wait until I show you the chord. Okay, the chord um, is a very complex chord harmonically, but it's actually very simple. It's the fourth of the scale and the fifth of the scale at the same time. Okay, for C, for example, the fourth of the scale would be F, and the fifth would be G, okay? So if you play F over G, okay, and you play F over G, you play F with the G as your bass note, you get the most powerful chord leading you back into C. It's a chord full of beauty and tension, okay? It's almost like the seventh chord. It's, it's a very dominant chord, but without being as um, as dominant uh, um, as the seventh, okay, without being so spicy, okay, it's it's a very harmonic chord, okay. So if you play C, okay, it's a very very good way to uh, lead back into the root chord and just full of music. Now, before I show you how to play it in different keys, let's see what's going on here, right? Because it's a very interesting chord. It's actually not an F over G chord, okay? This is not an F chord, okay? Um, you're playing one, two, three on strings, two, three, and four, right? You can also play the open E string, by the way. Okay, you can play the, the F major seven over G. Okay, but... Okay, it kind of loses the effectiveness, okay? This is the effective chord. If you add an extra note to it, okay, you want to do it as a melody and add that separately, okay? But what's going on here is that it's G. It has the seventh in it, okay? Even though it doesn't sound like a G7, it does have the seventh in it. But it also has the ninth, and it also has the 11th. So it's G7, 9, 11, okay? You can call it G11, but it's not really G11 because G11 would be kind of a jazz chord. Okay, it would be something like this. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. And okay, that would be G at 11. But this, this is G7, 9, 11. Okay, it's a stack of extension. And if you add this, you'll also have the 13th. Okay, if you add the E, okay, the E note there. Okay, now, um, okay, with C, I just add the, okay, the sus4, the sus2, and then the, the C, but I add it in the bass. Okay, just a classical movement, uh, in case you were wondering, but... Let's focus on this. Okay, so it's easier to call it F over G, but if you call it F over G, think about it for a moment. It, it's an F9 chord. It's an F add 9 chord. It's this. Okay, and this is not half as strong as this. Okay, so it's, it would be wrong to call it F add 9. Okay, even though technically it's true and the 9 is on the bass. So it's G7, 9, 11. Okay, I see no better way, no no other way to play it, uh, to to call it. Because if it's if it's a G seven, then it's a G seven. If it's a G nine, okay, then it's a G nine. If it's a G eleven, I already showed you. Okay, you have the okay, um, or it would be just G suspended. Okay, just G sus four. You need all of them for it to work. That's why I call it F over G, because it's both F and G. It's, you, you hear an F chord, but you also hear an, a G chord. Okay, it's the most powerful chord I know, and you know I know a lot of chords. Um, some people say that the sharp 9. 
Maybe the sharp nine is is the the, the most um, the most powerful chord. But I asked them, what about the flat thirteen chord? Okay, so so th there's a debate about it. But in my opinion, the you, you can't hear this chord. You just can't hear it without wanting it to resolve. Okay, you just have to finish on C here. Okay, if you have G seven. You can end on G7. Okay, if you have okay, a G9, you can end on G9. It's it's a it's a jazzy ending. But if you have this, you can just let it go and walk away. You have to and that's it. Goodbye. No, you can't. You have to. You want you you want to end it. Okay, you, it's it's almost physical. Yeah, you, you, you want to force it in. So how do you do it in different keys? Um, if, you have, um, if you have A, okay, then the fourth would be D with an E bass. Okay, so A. Okay, it would be D over E. Okay, you can do it like this. Okay, but but that's that's a a uh, sus four add six. This just this just needs the A bass. You have to have the low bass note. Okay, it's it's something about this chord. You have to have the low bass note. If you're on E, okay, it's A over B. Okay, and now this sounds a bit weird, okay, because it's just a bar. It's two, 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 and two on strings two to five. But if you do it a little bit higher up, let's take it in a, in a bar shape. So okay. uh, you can you can lead it. Okay, you can do A, you can do A over B, you can do A. Okay, you can do A A minor and then A over B. I'm just you know just fooling around here. Um, and there was another one. Oh, C over D. Um, that's a really good one uh, for guitar players. Um, it's uh, you have G, right? Okay, just get used to it. And that's C over D. Just one on the, the, the second string. Just one on the second string because you have a C chord, but you want a D bass. Okay, so it's, it looks a little bit weird. Okay, but, but it works. Okay, but um, for um, physical acoustic properties only, the F over G is the most uh, sonically Powerful of them all, which is why I started with that one. Okay? So go and try it, but before you do, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's hundreds, literally hundreds, of free lessons here uh, for your free guitar education. If you want to give something back anyway, there's a Patreon link in the description, and uh, I'm grateful for anything you choose to give, and everything goes right back into Lick and Riff, into your guitar education. So thank you very much for watching. Go try this, and I'll see you the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.